Welcome into the January 16th edition of the Locked on Lease podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morsuti. Maple Leafs put in a good effort in Boston, but ultimately shooting themselves in the foot with a couple of costly mistakes. We'll recap the game with the good, the bad, the ugly, and we'll debate if there's reason to worry about Morgan Riley. All that and more coming up on today's edition of Locked on Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, one stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast. So be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also catch us up on YouTube, search up Locked On Leafs on YouTube, hit subscribe. And uh, get new daily content every single weekday, Monday through Friday. It's all Leafs, all the time here on the Lockdown Leafs pod. Well, let's start off with uh, the new hardware you got there, Dave. Yeah, uh, it took a lot of time to research because if I'm going to buy a new microphone, better buy one that's going to work. <laughs> I, 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 you know me. I, I like. I don't like it when the audio is not working. So yeah, got got a new microphone, smaller than the other one. I like that a little bit better. Mm-hmm. You can nice. hear me. You can hear me clearly. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. So, let's hope that uh, let's hope that she's you know keeps working for you. Yeah. Let's hope she keeps working for you. All right, Dave. Let's get into the game here. Um, Leafs lose four three to Boston. Bit of a heartbreaker, I guess, just based off of like the. It, it, it was a vibe like it, it was there was some atmosphere in that game it was playoff-esque I think you could say um and then a minute and change left in the game uh you know Boston ends up taking the lead 4-3 and Toronto squish squanders a chance to get a point and probably actually kills their chances of coming back to make this a playoff race but um overall your impressions on the game Saturday night frustrating like the, losing you know the one team there's teams you don't like losing to and like watching that game it's clear that i mean just looking on twitter everything everyone was frustrated that a hat you had to lose to the bruins in boston like I'll, I'll say this the atmosphere you were right at td garden was just electric and that's kind of probably what fr- frustrates a lot of Leafs fans just because you know they were like it, it was like when they scored that fourth goal and the place goes nuts, it's just like, ah, uh, like it, it just, you just feel it. Right. So dude, um, you think it's game six of round one and they just scored to, you know, go up three or to tie the thing at three, three, or, you know what I mean? Like it really, really was quite an electric atmosphere in Boston, but like, that's a team that doesn't lose at home. They finally lost their first game at home against the crack and, the game before and they said to themselves we don't like this feeling we don't want that to happen again <laughs> so you know they, they end up getting the win and and it is what it is but what i kind of take from that game is it's looked at it positively like toronto can certainly hang with boston right they certainly can hang with boston and, and the best of them and the only team that can really hurt toronto is themselves yeah time and time again we've said this but like they keep proving it to us right they they, when they're playing the proper game they're 100 step for step with the bruins but then they kill themselves with their own stupid giveaways bad pet like it's just like that that connor timmons no look behind the back pass that gets picked up like that's that's not something that you need to be doing here, Timmins. Like, I, I, that's just not right. Morgan Riley peats up the middle. Not something that he needs to be doing. That's going to be costly. Tavares give away on the final. Like that. That's the issue here. When you go, you look, you break down all of their goals. 
most of them are coming off of Toronto's own self-inflicted turnovers. And and that's really why, you know, I, I believe that if they can just limit those and the games in which they do, they usually come out ahead and just need to be a little bit more focused maybe. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I'll take the positive from that game and say that they can hang with them, just got to limit and cut down the turnovers and mistakes. Yeah, I, I think that's that's really it, right? It's awareness. You need to have more awareness in those situations, right? Situational hockey. I think that's the big thing. I think Sheldon Keefe will be preaching about this in this, you know, when they go back and look on the video from this game. Um, I understand that you want to do your best to create every opportunity, but if you look at what Boston did in this game, they, they, they were waiting for those mistakes to happen, right? And they knew how to capitalize them, and they knew how to... And like the worst thing that happens, and we've seen it time and time again, when you when you force when you're when you give the puck away, you become flat footed, and that's what Boston lives and breathes on. Those opportunities to get those mismatches, get those odd man rushes, and kind of puts defense out of sorts, and then they can get a good chance on that. Like uh, yeah, every single goal that, and again, that's the frustrating part. Every goal, Boston, in a way. You didn't make them work for it. You gave it to them. Yeah. And yeah. that's 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 what was frustrating. Well, I think Morgan Riley's like almost word for word said that after the game, like we we just kind of gave them gave him the game on a silver platter. Here you go. Take it. Go ahead. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I but again, if, if we're gonna stay a little positive on it, I would say that it did show me that Toronto could definitely hang with these guys just can't make those killer costly mistakes and because Boston doesn't do that right like Boston doesn't make that mistake um so you, you got to make sure that if you're going step for step you got to make sure you don't do that either uh, Matthews made his return to the ice after missing the last couple of games he's he's still really good <laughs> he, yep. he was fantastic in that one and you could tell that Austin Matthews was gearing up to play in this game and he was kind of like shot like a slingshot like came out of a cannon came with with you know right away um an amazing play on the goal just starting from his own end playing baseball knocking the puck all the way down the ice it's a really good forecheck there too um and then obviously made just that unbelievable move in tight and was able to roof it over Allmark. but uh austin matthews looked pretty good in his return he did. No, he really did. It shows just how how different this team is when he's not out of the lineup versus when he's in the lineup, right? Yeah. Total night and day from what you saw against Detroit. Yeah, you know, it wasn't all perfect, but for Matthew's point, like you needed that goal, that goal to tie it at three late in the game, and no one else is scoring that goal but Austin Matthews. Like that just that play alone, like you just like, are you kidding me? Hey, that was my reaction when I saw it. We just it just took me a second to just be like, Yeah, yep, yeah, he 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 literally just did that. So like that that's what he's paid the big bucks to do, and he's proven time and time again that he can deliver in those moments. We'll see <laughs> how many of those moments will get going forward in terms of you know against potentially against the Bruins, because yeah, that you need you need to see that he can come up in those moments. Yeah. And uh, he ended up getting reunited with Mitch Marner there in the third period. And so it, did, it was when they scored the goal, and it was Marner's forecheck that forced the turnover, that allowed Bunting to get it, who got it to Matthews. So I wonder if maybe we might see those guys get reunited again at some point here. Um, I know Sheldon Keefe touched on it afterward, and he said, well, it's just for tonight. Um, going forward, we'll probably still remain – you know, status quo in the top six. But, um, you know, it was, it was nice to, to get a little glimpse of what, what used to be and what still could be if, if they really do need that jump and that push um, at some point here during the season or into the playoffs. But, uh, yeah, I, I, that, that still could be a killer line for, for this Maple Leafs team. Uh, all right, really quickly, I, I, want, I want to get your thoughts on, on Matt Murray's performance. Obviously, it comes up with a loss. Gives up four goals, but probably could have given up a, a couple more. 
um, made a few really, really big stops in this game, but also a couple of, you know, so-so goals. How would you grade Matt Murray's performance? It wasn't perfect. I mean, he what he did in the beginning of the game by that first stop is he ensured that this wouldn't – like, if I felt like if the Bruins scored on that first goal, it would have been a totally different game. Yeah. So I the, give him a lot of credit. Marshawn shot, yeah. Yeah, the one where he just uh, stopped, like, right in type. Um, like, that one there set the tone for the Leafs and saying, okay, our goalie's got our back in this game. I would I would give him kind of like a B. Like, a couple of the goals, like, the I think it was the Pasternak goal. I didn't care for it. I think he was a little too worried about – the player on the other side, like you got to like Pasternak's likely not passing that shot off. Usually he's not. Um, but like, you know, he, I think uh, the fourth goal, you know, he felt like, I guess he felt he was interfered on. They didn't bother to challenge it. And I, that would have been a tough one. Cause then you would have had to go on a penalty kill if you didn't get a, get the challenge. Right. So I get that one. Um, like there were a couple of goals. I felt like, he should have had them, but at the same time, like I thought he did, I mean, did a great job to go toe to toe with Linus Olmark, who was really good in this game as well. Yeah, he was like both these goalies played it, played phenomenal. Both teams were great. It's just, you know, one team made a couple more mistakes than the other. And, you know, those mistakes are costly when you're facing a, a veteran team like Boston who preys on their opponents uh, and, and baits them into making those those mistakes and once you do they make you pay uh all right let's take a quick break when we get back dave let's go through the good the bad the ugly and then we're gonna have a little chat are fans right to be concerned about morgan riley there's been a lot of discourse about this online i think it's time you and i kind of address things and give our viewpoints on the situation so we'll do all that on the other side but first dave how about a word from one of our show sponsors ag1 Yep, our good friends over Athletic Greens. It's something I take every day to help me get my day started off right and to help optimize my health, to help me with, in many ways, help my gut health, give me more energy, optimize my immune system. I'm someone that struggles to remember to have to take all the different vitamins and supplements, you know, whether it's the all-in-ones or, you know, you want to make sure you get your vitamin D during the winter time. Why not get that all in one solution so you don't have to worry about it? And that's what AG1 offers. In one delicious scoop, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day off right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, aging, all the things. So, the reason why, as I said, you know, I wanted something that was going to help me. Every day, something that was going to be very simple for what I was looking for. And that is exactly what AG1 provides. Tons of people take some kind of multivitamins. It's important to choose one with high quality ingredients your body will actually absorb. AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take care of yourself. And if you didn't know, your subscription comes with a year supply of vitamin D, which is so important to add in these winter months when you don't get as much sunlight, which affects your mood from what I've been told. So if you want to have a better mood, got to get that vitamin D in you. Athleta Greens is also a climate neutral certified company. In 2020, AG1 purchased carbon credits that support projects protecting old growth rainforests. For every purchase, they donate to organizations helping to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here over in the U.S. In 2020, AG1 donated over 1.2 million meals to kids in that year. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free trial packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens slash NHL Network. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. 
Welcome back into the Locked On At Least podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. Uh, all right, so it was a 4-3 loss to the Boston Bruins Saturday night. And as we do after every single Leafs loss, we're going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly from that game. So we'll start uh, We'll start positively. What was uh, what was good from the game the other night? Um, I thought Austin Matthews, yeah, he was like, he was, he was very good in this game. And I guess maybe the fact that every time the Bruins would score, the Leafs had a response. Yeah. That, that was the good part. The, you know, that game could have easily tilted in favor of either team. I give the Leafs credit for keeping that game, you know, keeping that game pretty level for, you know, for most of it. Yeah. I, I also had. Austin Matthews as uh, as as my good. I mean, that's as good as I think you're going to get out of Austin Matthews coming off of a, a week where he's been off and where he was you know sick and, and not feeling well. You know, he showed up to play in this game knowing that it was an important one. And I know unfortunately they didn't come away with any points, but you know he played well himself. He was fantastic um, in this game tonight. Uh, the bad. What was uh, what was something that was bad from you? Uh, bad from me. Um, oh, because I have, I clearly have my ugly. Bad. I'm, I'm not gonna blame the officiating. I'm gonna go the opposite direction. Say I think the Leafs let frustrations kind of boil over on them, including Michael Bunting. I understand when things, when calls aren't going your way, you want to have a conversation with the refs. But I felt like Michael Bunting sometimes puts it on himself by, I don't want to say barking at them, but he, I'm not going to call him a whiner, but he gets a little bit too much with the refs. I'll I, say I, this. I'll say, I'll say this. Like he's, he, so he's drawn a lot of penalties this year. Yeah. And I wonder if he's starting to get a reputation because oh, he has a reputation. There's no doubt. But like it's starting to go against him now because this is two games in a row where there's some pretty blatant calls on Michael Bunting that just simply aren't getting called. Like on that breakaway, like I, I mean, he was like that. That should have been a penalty. Like I don't, I don't understand how he didn't get uh, get a call there, a penalty shot, a, a a slashing call like that. That to me was a penalty. And there was uh was the was it the game against Detroit where he took the high stick to the face that yeah. went on call too like you know to me it, it, there's a couple of things that uh in the last few games that have been missed which certainly he's rightfully upset about um and yeah I, I wonder if that reputation is starting to go against him now for me I, I I mean like we were talking about it before you know Matt Murray I thought he played well but but that third and fourth goal like those those two aren't aren't good goals like those are pretty bad ones to give up you know even Matt Murray would tell you that I think Sheldon Keith even said you know Murdoch played good if uh if if he could have the third and fourth goal back he would and I would agree with that like he made some really really quality stops tonight um you mentioned the one against Marshawn early on he had a couple against Marshawn like throughout the game that were just solid uh solid um saves but the third and fourth goal, I mean, like you said, the one against Pasternak, that's just like a short side goal. It didn't see I don't know what he was what he was doing there, but like that's one that he you gotta stop nine times out of ten. Yeah. And he didn't make that stop this time around. And then even the, the game winner, like that was kind of a floating puck coming in from Grizzlick, but like it's Matt Grizzlick who's shooting that puck. It's not like it's Kale McCarr or you know, like it's not Eric Carlson. Right, so like that, that that's probably a puck that he'd want to want to stop and, and get. Um, kind of went through him too, so I would say that those goals were were kind of bad. Uh, y- you don't want to see him giving up those too too often, but you know it, it is what it is. Sometimes he's gonna give up a, a bad goal a night, and just happen to be you know a couple of costly ones for Toronto at the end of the game there. All right, the ugly Dave, which you were very much anticipating. Uh, talking about what is your ugly? The Leafs being dummies with turnovers. Wow! Like, yeah, it, especially the Timmins Riley pairing. That's like, what my ugly is. Like those yeah. specifically dash three through the first three goals of the game for Boston. Can't not, you, not the best. No, and I'm surprised Sheldon Keith didn't after the first couple goals didn't consider making a move to change that up. Like, eventually, but 
too late. Yeah, like, like this is where this is the frustration sets in a little bit with Sheldon Keep. I get he's married with a lot of what he does and doesn't want to make a change for sake of making a change. But when things are that bad, when things are glaring, I want to see an adjustment happen so that you know you're taking that chance of not having a tur- another turnover, another bad play, because then. If if they were on, let's say the Leafs tied it again and they lost again and they allowed another goal, in the very same way, it's just like, what are you doing to tell these guys to, you know, wake up, <laughs> like w- to not do this, like to yeah, burn up. And the only way you sometimes a coach can do it is okay, I got to split these guys up. Sometimes it's like instead of telling the guys that you need to get your act together, I'm going to make the change. I'm going to force things to be different because I don't know if I can trust that to turn it around themselves. Yeah. I think the biggest problem is um, there's no TJ Brody and like TJ Brody is the biggest elixir that this team has. Like if there's an issue, let's toss Brody on that pairing and let's shore it up. Right. And, and without Brody, it's really, you know, there's not much you can do in terms of having flexibility I think within the D pairs, but like if you look at the game last night or Saturday night, the numbers for Riley and Timmons when they were out there on the ice were staggering. I think the shots were 12 2 against them when they were out there on the ice together. Um, allowed three goals <laughs> out there on the ice together. It wasn't good. It, it really wasn't good. Couple costly turnovers from each player um, in the game. So yeah, to me that pairing was uh, was ugly and. You know, Connor Timmins, for as good as he's been, I think, I mean, got exposed, I guess, against real top talent playing on a, you know, a, a minute munching top pair for with Riley and Timmins. So, or with, uh, yeah, Riley and Timmins. Again, not not that I'm going to sit here and say that the bubble's bursting on Connor Timmins because I don't think it is. I think he's just playing a little bit above his weight right now. Um He's, he is more suited down the lineup, though, like as a second or third pair guy, right? Preferably third pair until he really gets going here. Uh, but I, I at least like, and, and Sheldon Keith mentioned it after the game, his willingness to at least battle in front of the net. And yes. and this team kind of needs someone who's willing to do that. And at least Connor Timmons is willing to. Morgan Riley, does he battle enough in front of the net? Why don't we have that discussion on the other side? Because there's been a lot of discourse online about Morgan Riley, about the concern levels that Leafs Nation has with his play since returning, um, the team's defensive structure seemingly starting to fade since he's returned, and whether or not this is a problem. We'll have that discussion on the other side. But first, let me tell you about one of today's show sponsors. That's betonline.net. It's your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to basketball to hockey. We've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well, too. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, it's where the game starts. Welcome back into the Locked On at Least podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano. Got Dave Morissuti with me, my host here at Locked On Leafs. Morgan Riley has become a very polarizing player in this market. Dave, I think that's fair to say. Mm-hmm. Um, made another brutal turnover in the game against Boston, leading to their first goal of the hockey game. And that was, you know, rightfully scrutinized by a lot of Leafs Nation. But overall, Dave, like, do, are you concerned about the level of play and what's kind of happened with this team's defensive structure since Riley's return about three or so weeks ago? To yeah, when he returned, December 29th, he returned. So since that point, I'm, I'm look. I'm not happy with Morgan Riley's play. I think I, I don't know how you can be encouraged by his play just because you're seeing the mistakes that he's making. But I'm not going to blame Morgan Riley's return on what the defense has done because one player doesn't affect how five other players play. He's not on the ice 
every time those guys are on the ice. Like I, I don't like that thought that it's his return that's causing the Leafs defense fall apart. Because in my opinion, it's not. I just think that there's been a lot of injuries. There's been a lot of moving around, and you know, guys playing in different roles and things like that. Like Timothy Lilligren and Rasmus Sandin have been playing very well. Like that that pairings work. Jordano Hall have had their have been mostly good, and they've had their moments where they haven't been good. But that's not Morgan Riley's fault. I, the the problem I have here with Morgan Riley, and I was listening to uh, 590 on Friday, and Jim Ralph was on with Nick Kiprios, and he basically, Kiprios asked Jim Ralph, like, when you watch Morgan Riley play, do you see a defenseman who's conflicted in terms of what his role is supposed to be? Is he supposed to be a defensive defenseman, or is he supposed to be an offensive defenseman? If you look at what Morgan Riley, what he's supposed to be, He's supposed to be a guy that's driving offense. He is not that stay-at-home guy. We know that. Mm-hmm. It just feels like there. He's not. I wouldn't say he's not sure of what he's doing, but there's there seems to be a lack of direction of what Riley is supposed to be doing out there. There's like the 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 turnover. That's just a bad. Like we're seeing that too often. Is Sheldon Keith like what's Sheldon Keith telling Riley about those plays? We don't know. Like I don't know if if they've even really been asked. Like have those issues been brought? We know Morgan Riley is a very accountable person. I'm oh, sure I guarantee you, I guarantee you they've been brought up like, hey, yeah. can't be doing this. Next time let's try this instead of that. Here's this option. You know, like that I, I guarantee you those those turnovers, especially when they lead to goals, are definitely brought brought up in the film room. Yeah. Like, yeah, it can't like I, I definitely and I think Morgan Riley's probably looking at those plays on the bench. With the iPads, I'm sure John Toro doesn't like that idea, but I'm sure Morgan Rowley is looking at those plays and he's saying like that's another stupid turnover. Eventually, he's gonna have to learn, right? Like I don't know, you know, maybe a little bit of tough love will have to happen here. But at the same time, are you gonna bench your eight million dollar defenseman? You that you don't want to, but a message has to be sent at some point saying you're hurting this team when you're making those plays. Like I and I look, Morgan Raleigh's aware of that. I, I think people are the way I'm hearing people talk. Morgan Raleigh is if he's oblivious to it. I don't think he's oblivious to it. I just think that there's something, there's probably extra pressure on him that, you know, something's something's not clicking there. And you and here's the thing I'll say: you need Morgan Raleigh to be successful for this team to be successful. I don't like this idea that now he's becoming the latest whipping boy. I just don't like the whipping boy approach. I mean, we've done, we've done it before with guys like Justin Hall and things like that. But when Morgan Riley has the pressure of being a leader on this team, one of the few guys I feel like is a, is the right leader on this team. Plus he's got the contract and the responsibility of being that number one defenseman when really probably a little bit miscasted as you know, that, Victor Hedman type defenseman because a lot of people like to call, like to say oh he's like a Victor Hedman out there which I think is very unfair Victor Hedman's a very different type of defenseman I just think like guys support your players support your support a guy like Morgan Riley because he's clearly going through it and he's got you need him to turn it around you can't like I'm sure he's feeling the pressure of you know of everything that's going on Fan base doesn't need to add that pressure. I'm sure he already has it on himself already. Yeah, he definitely does. Like he's he's an emotional guy. I think that he he wants to perform for his team and and for you know his his boys out there. But um, look, I, I, I like just digging into the numbers a little bit. I don't think they're as staggering like since he's returned as maybe people have made it seem. I think when you look at the numbers, he's finding himself on the wrong side of a bad bounce more often than, than you would think, but he is among the, I guess, since his return, we'll say um, among all of the blue liners who have come back for, or that have played for the Maple Leafs since his return. So I'll, I'll sort it by that, which means I guess so Jordy Ben and Connor Timmons numbers will also be included here. Uh, but when you look at like expected goals per 60, Morgan Riley, 
is number one on the list at expected goals against per 60. So he's a, he's giving up more chances and he's giving up more, you know, high danger quality chances um, than anybody else on that blue line. So that is a little concerning. And, you know, his starts are even favorable, 52% ozone starts, and he's still giving up those types of numbers. It's, it's not what you want to see. Out of Morgan, uh, out of Morgan Riley, um, 2.84 goals against per 60, which is fourth. Jordy Ben, who was Morgan Riley's D partner in that game, um, is number one, but that's small sample size. Giordano and Hall have also been very unlucky. Uh, Gio has allowed 3.81 goals against per 60, which is up there in the tops of the league, like top 15 in the NHL for goals allowed per 60 since Morgan Riley's return to uh, the ice, yet the goal expected goals against just two, three, three. So, you know, he's just got to be a bad save percentage. I'm going to assume 869 on ice save percentage when, when Mark Giordano's on the ice, 892 save percentage when Morgan Riley is on the ice. So sometimes you want to get that save from the goalie too. So when the goaltenders are struggling, which they were in like that first half of where these numbers are being, taken from from december 29th until about last weekend or so the goalies did struggle right there were there there was a couple of games there they allowed five apiece you know so th- there are some nights where the goalies didn't help so any mistake was getting amplified and because it was ending up in the back of the net ultimately i'm not i'm not overly concerned about morgan riley I think that Riley is still a, a good player, a good defenseman. Um, and you're right when you say that he drives offense, and it's not quite happening right now. Uh, his, if we want to look at like the offensive analytics and the numbers there, um, goals four per 60, 1.62. So he's not on the ice. He's been on the ice for like one and a half goals per 60 minutes, which is pretty hot, uh, pretty low, and is the lowest among all of the blue liners who've played for Toronto in that time span. But the expected goals is number one. Um, sorry, no, that was expected goals against. Expected goals number three behind Sandy and Timothy Lilligren at 2.99. So, you know, when you look at it, there's over a goal per 60 minutes that the team is expected to score and just – haven't really been finishing um, whether it's they're getting good goaltending on the other side or they're just missing out on some good chance at opportunities. Obviously there was the games against Nashville and against Detroit where, you know, um, Matthews didn't play and the offense was a little suspect, you know, so there's, you could look at it. There's a couple of reasons for it, but ultimately he, he does need to start putting, putting up some points here. I mean, since he's returned, He's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games out of nine where he's been pointless. That's not what you would expect out of an eight million dollar defenseman. So he does need to start getting some uh, getting some points up on the board. Just three assists in those nine games. Uh, we ended up getting back onto the power play where we saw the five forward unit return. That's not good news for Morgan Riley supporters who has made a living off of getting points off the power play a lot. So if him not being there too, kind of hurts his value. Um, But ultimately I've, I've, I've heard the discourse and I want to hear your thoughts on this and then we'll, we'll go. We got to wrap up, but I've seen this proposed in our, in our discord on some of the YouTube comments, people saying that Morgan Riley should consider becoming a winger. Can we stop? with that <laughs> like, yeah no, i like i don't know sometimes the weather take it seriously when things like that are said like i hate to say that but like it's everyone thinks they're an expert everyone said the same thing about jay gardner like probably a lot of people said it about eric carlson at one point in his career now i'm not like like look like morgan riley is still yeah he's technically starting he's kind of in the prime of his career but like I'm not like that's just a little bit of a ridiculous comment in my opinion because he's not it's not like he's 
you know, constantly on the wrong end of the ice every time he's in the offensive zone. He's not treating himself like a forward, right? Like that's that's just a little bit ridiculous. Like I even think Justin Hall pinches down in the zone more than Morgan Rowley does. Well, when we have in the discourse about Justin Hall as a winger, like that's that's kind of I I find that to be a bit ridiculous. Like he's a defenseman. I we've seen that he has the talent to be a puck moving defenseman. He just needs to get that confidence back, and I think he'll get there. It's going to take time. Like he had a pretty significant knee injury. He was out for months. You know, you don't just come back and be able to play at top caliber right away. That takes time. I mean, how much time can they afford to give him? There's a little bit of impatience because of where the Leafs are in the standings and what this year means. I understand that. But, yeah, like, let's stop with this whole – that's just silly talk. It's just silly talk. Not to, not to fact check you too much. He wasn't out months. He was out for a month and a week. But, anyways. He was uh, supposed to be out for two months. He came back, I think, earlier, too. Than maybe yeah, he was out for – so he, he got injured on November 21st, and he was back by – December 29th. So six ish weeks um, that he was out for. Uh, but the last two games, Dash Four took it a penalty, zero shots on goal. He needs, to, yeah, he needs to be better. I'm not saying he's the perfect player. He's definitely not. Yeah. But yeah. He's I'm not gotta... I don't like piling on a guy when he's down either. He knows he's not playing well. Yes. Yeah. That's our job, though. We have to talk this stuff. We got to do it. Like, I have no problem people. criticizing his play. I'm also not going to be the one that's going to say he needs to be moved to four because he can't defend. No, him. that's just silly talk. Literally just absolute silly talk. I hope he picks it up. I hope he turns it around. I really, really do. They need him to. I mean, I like Morgan Riley as a person. He's the longest-serving Maple Leaf. He's an assistant captain. For this team, um, in in a lot of ways, I feel like he's a heartbeat and and carries himself captain like. He's just struggling right now, you know. He's just struggling. That that's what it is. He needs confidence again. You know, confidence is a is a big thing in this sport. We've seen what confidence has done to to Connor Timmins. What confidence has done for Justin Hall's game overall. Um, you know, there's there's no difference here with. With Morgan Riley, the second he gets some confidence, strings together a few really good games. I think he'll be back to to who he is and what he is. And um, you know, will he ever live up to the eight million dollar price tag? Probably not. I'll be honest. I don't think he will. But I think he could live up to at least you know being a, a quality top pair guy who you feel comfortable playing 20, 22 minutes a night in any circumstance. Um, that's what I need him to get back to being. Yeah. And then I think this team will be all right. All right, Dave, we got to fly. Uh, good show today. A lot of fun. We got another game tomorrow. Leafs in Florida taking on Maddie Kachuk and company. Uh, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast, though. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to Locked On These Podcasts on all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more Sudi follow the show as well at Lockdown Leafs. I will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll tee up the Leafs and the Panthers. But until then, keep locked right here on Lockdown Leafs.